What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Erica, from the Classy Climb blog. Man, I have a great one today. We've got Tech Tuesday special guest, Batina. Okay, listen, before I even set this up, you guys, I met her at AJ Simmons Clean Biz Network. I was so delighted to talk with her. She gave me the best photos out of the event. Listen, I was hoping people took tons of photos. They did, all kind of crazy photos. Got me looking crazy. But the best photos came from Miss... But Tina, okay, listen, I am super thrilled. This is kind of a double show, you guys, because not only is she in tech, she owns a cleaning business. And she balling. I mean, I mean, I can't say the numbers, it's secret, <laughs> but she balling, okay? So I always want to bring y'all the best guests to inspire y'all the story. Also, you know, I think she used to be out there playing basketball with the, the Gamecocks or something. I don't know. She's tall now. Okay, I said, hey, who is this? We got basketball players up in here. So listen, you guys say a lovely welcome to Miss Patina. Introduce yourself to the audience. I love it. Love it. What's up? Hello, my name is Bettina Walker. I am from a small town called Saluda, South Carolina. That's my home plate. Um, but I reside um, near Columbia, South Carolina. Just truly excited um, to be able to share my story where I could possibly help someone, inspire somebody, or push them to the next level. Love it, love it. And so listen, you know, the Tech Tuesday has been encouraging people so we can look at a diverse group of people who are in tech. So many times people think tech means, you know, nerds, groups, uh, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, hoodies, Harvard. And we just want to kind of dispel some of that and show people that there's just a variety range. Like tech is just a name for a lot of companies and a lot of jobs that are there. So of course, I'm going to ask, how did you get into tech? So I always tell people, um, I didn't choose tech, but tech chose me. Okay. Um, and, and the reason why I say this, I started out in healthcare when I was like 17 years old as a nurse tech. I thought I was going to be an RN, you know, um, because RNs make money. Shout out to my nurses. Hey now. And <laughs> got into school, went to a technical college because it was free. Um, and I didn't have to do nothing but show up. I had a lot of scholarships and grants. So I was like, all right, I'm going to be a nurse. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Got into the nursing program. Got into med surge. Oh, okay. And so then I was like, look, I ain't going to be able to do it. And then I only missed it by one point. The lady could have gave me one point. But again, she didn't give it to me. So I was like, okay. They were like, well, you can enter back in. Or, you know, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to transfer to a four-year institution. I don't have time, you know. Uh, being that 19-year-old, just like, I'm ready to go because I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um so I got my associate's degree um from there in health science and then I transferred to Lander University um which was in Greenwood South Carolina beautiful town love Greenwood yeah. it's like a second home um to me and being in Greenwood I worked at the clothing store I was still taking classes so they transferred me in pre-med mm -hmm. and I'm like ah no yet you know but I I, I stuck with it you know, um, kind of having that grandiosity attitude, like, you know, you know, it wasn't meant for me to be a nurse. I'm going to be a doctor, you know. <laughs> she can't stop me. <laughs> Until I got to organic chemistry. Hey. And I made a 53. Um, The <laughs> highest grade was like a 62. I didn't go to any parties. I was just like, I'm a study. And at that time, they didn't have like these tests. It was literally like the midterm and the final. So I sat there and I was just like, this is not working for me. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just like, okay, the Holy Spirit was like, okay, you've been looking at healthcare management, you kind of been just glancing at it, um, went to the registrar's office, changed my major to healthcare management, business administration, emphasis in healthcare management, instantly GPA went to a 3.5. So I was like, okay, this is my jam, you know, I'm like, all right. You know, um, I'm with it. You know, I'm still in healthcare, just on the business side of healthcare, the finance side of healthcare, the uh, accounting side, and even mm -hmm. systems. And so I went to a liberal arts college where you have to take every class in every major. <laughs> okay. Um, got to BA 304, mm -hmm. one of the hardest classes in the curriculum. Um, the teacher, I cannot think of her name, she was a retired. Um, she was retired from Microsoft and she was like, I want you guys to come in this way. That's why I'm so organized. She's like, I want you to have your files this way. You're going to sit here. Mm -hmm. When you come in and you do these presentations, 
you're not going to have note cards. I'm going to video you. I mean, she was so like yeah. on point. Yes, she was wow. so on point. A B felt like an eight. I got a B, even though I lost my edges. Um, oh, not during the that edges. Class. <laughs> edges was gold. Edges was gold. <laughs> but it was one of the best classes. And so from there, I ended up scoring um, an amazing internship with Accenture in London, England. Went to London. Um, hey, wait, 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 wait. Full. You went to London? <laughs> Did you just went to London. London, London, England. Yes. Okay. Okay. And um, it was just a whole different world. It was um, we had to compete for our, our big internships. Mm -hmm. Um, we had to compete for them. We went through resume building. We went mm -hmm. through how to build a team. We went through um, how to speak during the interview, how to present yourself during the interview. They really went through the whole process with us, and we had to compete um, for the big internships. But something, uh, one of my professors, Mr. Sam Talbert, um, he had a key to to Greenwood. He had a key to the city. Nice. Um, very, very big in healthcare. Um, and he asked me, he said, where are you working at? So I'm like, getting fit trends, you know, just, you know, selling clothes, you know, retail. And he was like, I'm going to need you to find you another part-time job. And I was like, why? He was like, you need to be in healthcare because you need experience. Uh -huh. So I was like, I'm going to get that. Like, I don't really know people like that. Um, well, one of the ladies from City Trends ended up leaving and became a pharmacy technician. Hey. And she was like, hey, we got some openings here at CVS. Um, they pay them more. You get paid every week. So I was like, all right, I'm good. I, I paid every I'm week. Out. <laughs> every week. Every it's like, we need you today. <laughs> right. And I became a pharmacy technician. Um, started dealing with claim information, insurance, mm -hmm. prior authorizations, understanding how systems work, understanding what prescriptions are, control substances. Right. Um, I mean, dealing with, I mean, a lot of things. And I was just like, wow, you know. Um, so Got the internship, um, studied abroad. It was four of us. Um, came back and I was just like, that was just a different experience. Um, to be able to go to a different continent, I know, um, travel internationally. Come on now, right? And uh, my mom was so excited taking me to the Atlanta airport, and she uh -huh. had prayer with everybody. She like, in the name of Jesus, y'all coming back. You're coming back. You, you know, everybody, you're going to be, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And so I'm um, heard about, uh, they had prayer for the whole, like the whole group that was going. <laughs> and uh, we had such a good time um, and just learning to have an awesome instructor that really kind of showed us the ropes. And so we did research for Accenture. Um, didn't really know what Accenture was, but I researched them, understood. I was like, oh, okay, this is a pretty, pretty big company here. Um, and just how they just embrace, they really embrace um, different people from different backgrounds. Um, and so learning from there, um, pharmacy technician, um, my main goal was to intern as much as possible. So that's why I always tell students, hey, look, don't wait till they give you an internship. Always intern. I intern. <laughs> I intern after London, England. I was working as a pharmacy technician. Then I did hospice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, cleaning bags for nurse practitioners, um, home health nurses that work for hospice. I'm um, going putting balloons on their hospice patients' beds for certain occasions. Um, mm -hmm. typing up notes for them. Um, I mean, cleaning, um, nice. mopping, yeah. whatever needed to be done was done. Um, then from there, I um went to Wesley Commons. It's like a senior living, um, course, and I started a even a assistant living um area. And so they needed um, people to come to teach um, the elderly how to use Microsoft Word. So I started teaching Girl, them how to, do, <laughs> right, how to do calendars, how to do birthday <laughs> cards. Um, I was so proud. I took pictures on every level. I was like, like here, baby. you know, it's like, you know, so I had like a little curriculum. Mm -hmm. um and then I just kept I just kept moving and so it ended up landing me that same professor um Sam Talbert um he said hey what do you want to be and I said oh I want to be the CFO because I was good with numbers he was like okay he's like well I'm gonna start you um I'm gonna see can I get find you find you a good opportunity so um my senior year my last semester taking six classes because I was ready to go he's like please six classes fast track this working as a pharmacy technician um had a paid internship at the hospital through this contractor company 
um, started at the bottom, literally. Um, this lady, she wanted to go to college and they was looking for somebody part-time, but they turned into an internship for me. Mm -hmm. um, could not tell you what, I knew what HIPAA was on the theory side, but didn't understand it from the, um, from the functionality side of the revenue cycle. So then I started working with the systems there. It was Meditech, um, putting in billing information, claims, negotiation. Um, I would do research for the attorneys when they was getting ready to put a lien against people's properties Dang. for their hospital bills, uh, <laughs> pull in all the credit reports, look at the liens. Yes, yeah, they will put liens for um, is it a, is it a certain amount of. It has to be for a lien, like a yes. hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Yeah, crazy no no, no. no, no, no. It could be three. I think at the time it was like three thousand. Stop, South Carolina. Yes. Stop it. Yes, they was coming for blood. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And so I started researching. I had to pull kind of like on uh, Nexus Lexus, if you guys are familiar with that. I was able to pull like credit credit reports. I could see how much credit limit they had on their um oh their goodness. their credit cards. Um, wait, I had wait, to wait, wait. Pause, pause, pause for a second. Yeah. You guys, did you hear that? I want you to understand. She said Nexus Lexus. She was able to go in there, see that you got 20K on that Capital One and you better come pay this hospital bill. Yes. I want y'all to understand how valuable credit is. We have a funding course and we talk a lot about it. So I just, <laughs> I want y'all to in the chat. I want you to put hospital bill in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> put a hospital bill in the chat because you see how they playing. They ain't playing. Especially if in South Carolina. North Carolina, we don't do like that. We don't do like that. But South Carolina do do that. So hospital bill in the chat. Uh, and if you guys are enjoying the commentary, please put one in the chat so we know where you are. And also drop your city and state in the chat so that we can know where we need to do our next pop-ups continue continue with the nexus lexus crime so mom. um we literally you know so i'm researching i'm learning i'm learning about business owners um when they didn't have insurance um and how they had to pay you know um a lot because at the time that was before the affordable care act so okay. they had huge deductibles huge deductibles mm -hmm. um one business owner i researched you know and i was like man they own half the city like, you know, Greenwood. So I was just like, y'all on gas stations, y'all on this, y'all on that, you know. And so I'll make a friendly call and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to get some information from you, whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, they didn't really want me calling, but I was just so nice to them where they would just come and bring Chase. They were like, hey, look, I can pay you $5,000 a month um, until the bill is paid. Um, of course, that made my commission. I was only making eleven dollars an hour, and mm -hmm. I think um, before I graduated, they bumped me up to eleven fifty. So really. everything eleven fifty, eleven fifty, and I was like, okay, I gotta find a way because eleven fifty in two thousand seven, like that wasn't nobody. I was like, man, I gotta yeah, find a way. Two thousand seven, that's still on nobody, yeah. Right. So um, the thing is, is that they have bonus systems. So I had to learn about claims, learn about code coding um, when it comes down to claims, learning the ins and out of insurances, learning, you know, how does the system process claims? How do they look from the medical record to the actual billing cycle when it comes down to it? So kind of understanding what the system did um, allowed me a lot of freedom to be able to connect with my patients, but also make sure that I have a great understanding. So I would find loopholes and insurances like, oh, so they was in a car accident, right? And you guys thought that the insurance is going to pay, but guess what? She was just listed as a driver, but she wasn't a primary driver. Right. So with that being said, now her insurance, her, her insurance can pay for this, right? So just finding loopholes from that standpoint. So I stayed with that company um, for a while. Um, I moved to Columbia to go to grad school. Um, and I worked there, um, part-time and then I worked for a major hospital system, um, in, in Columbia that paid for my master's degree. So there are companies out here. I tell you all the time, <laughs> is your job going to pay for that? Why are you going for that? Let them pay exactly. for master's degree. Exactly. They want you to have um, a master's degree, they, you go master a check. That's what you can do. And, and I, you know, I had to learn. I was just like, you know, I took two years off after my, um, my undergrad and I said, let me see what this degree first does before I go and get an advanced degree. Um, and so I start researching, looking, and I'm like, hmm, I'm going to need a master's degree if I'm going to be on the top of the food chain. So 
um, when it comes down to corporate. And that's just from my experience. I know everybody's experience is different, but that's just from my experience um, and just my research. And so um, went to school um, that same day, literally that same day I moved, I was in school, <laughs> I was moving, yeah, and I was going, up. yeah, so I, um, so the contract that um, physician um, that I was with at in Greenwood, they said, hey, you know, we're housed in Lexington, would you like to work for us part-time, and I was like, sure, you Lexington. know, it's dead. No, Lexington Medical Center. So it's um yeah, Lexington Medical Center is a hospital, one of the one of the biggest hospitals in South Carolina. Okay. Um outside of um the big the big I call them the big three. So in Columbia, you've got um in the Midlands area, you've got Lexington Medical Center, you got Prisma Health, and you have MUSC. Um and MUSC is a teaching hospital outside of um Charleston in Charleston. Um it's also a university. So um, they're they're moving, they're moving, they're moving and shaking as well. So um, I knew Lexington Medical Center had um, the tuition reimbursement at the time. And so that's why I went with. Um, and from there, I still work for that that company, that small company, because I felt like I needed more experience. Right. I felt like I needed more experience in leadership. Um, I needed more experience on understanding systems. How do you put processes together? How do you hire people? Right. How do you fire people? Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I, I sat there. I sat there for a season. I would literally be working for them at night while I'm studying, um, doing what I need to do from that standpoint. And so they gave me the opportunity on leadership there. Um, they changed my title to a special projects coordinator. Um, I was still working for Lexus, Lexus Medical Center at the time. They changed your title. Did they give you a raise? No, they didn't give me a raise, oh, but they man. gave me a percentage. Nah, they, they play it. They play it. <laughs> but they, okay. they gave me a higher percentage uh, when it came down to like different like stocks and stuff like that. So I kind of took that as like, well, I made pretty good, you know, pretty decent at Lexington and they're paying for a master's degree. Right. And then I'm working part time over here okay, okay. Um, from it. that standpoint. But um, then it came to a crossroad where it was like I got promoted at Lexington Medical Center and I was like, I ain't gonna have the time. I don't have the time like I used to. Um, and plus the, the company was changing and I was just like, yeah, I can just, you know, kind of push, push it back a little like bit. Staff? So um, the owner of the company, um, and he was amazing. He, I mean, very true example of an entrepreneur. Of course, you've got to have acquisition and mergers. You have to, you know, so uh, offer came up to him to sell the company and he couldn't resist it. So he sold it. And so when he sold it, um, it kind of lost the the feel because it was more of a family. Um, it kind of lost the feel from there. It was pretty much like that company was like numbers, 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 numbers. And I'm like, eh, it's kind of I don't have to. Private equity be like numbers over everything. Yeah. yeah. And I just couldn't. I, I was just like, no, I'm already, you know, I didn't finish grad school. I'm here at Lexington. I'm, you know, climbing. Um, and that was my introduction um, to EPIC, um, the Affordable Care Act in 2010 um, basically what had a... What do we call it, though? What is Obama, it the Obama, Obama Act, care? but... <laughs> it's got a whole but, name, maybe like, anyway, it's Obamacare. <laughs> right, but it, it's so much deep. That act yeah. was so deep. Like, it was so deep when they talked about bandwidth, when they talked about, I mean, it was so deep. So anyhow, the the centers of Medicaid and Medicare services decided to say, hey, because of this money, um, we're going to pay hospitals, we're going to pay FQHCs, we're going to pay people to um, switch their system over so they can have electronic health workers within their area um, with that. And so my area at the time, I was in patient registration mm -hmm. and utilization uh, review. And so I was in charge of like 18 people um, at my young age <laughs> of 18 people. But um, I was the SME to help build out that patient um, patient registration um, as well as building out the utilization. So what utilization review is basically just making sure that prior authorizations that nurses connect with, um, with the patients to see if there's anything that they can do um, to make sure that their experience is where it needs to be. And so with that implementation, I nicely say, you know what, I'm going to go federal contract. Um, and so I did federal contract for six months. I just needed a moment. 
Um, because anybody that knows in project management, you know how things can get, especially uh, implementing one of the the biggest, I call Epic the Cadillac of EHR, um, just because it runs smoothly. Um, it connects with everything, interface on the back end. Like it's it's the Cadillac. So that's what I call Epic. Obamacare became the Cadillac. Okay, yeah. That's where you work at with 18 people underneath you. Right. Doing it big, yeah. manager style, manager. <laughs> so I was like, I, I couldn't, you know, being young sometimes and not really having an understanding of leadership. Right. Um, and it was just like, it was just time for me to transition for a season. So um, I transitioned out, did federal contracting for six months. Um, the company I was working for lost the contract. And they were like, well, you have a year. And I was like, no, nah, I need some permanent, you know. Um, and so during that time, even with federal contracting, I was, you know, kind of dibbling, dabbling a little bit in nursing home, um, you know, care when it came down, came, came down to it and stuff like that. Um, and so I just, you know, said, hey, let me find me another. Let me find me something else because I can't, I can't do <laughs> with I have. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I just left left from there and I applied for um, the state of South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. They had an IT auditor position open, um, went in, um, didn't know if I was going to get a job. I was just like, hey, I can't lose now. You know, I'm just like, I have nothing else to lose. So I might as well go ahead on and do it. Ended up getting a job. Um, and the salary was literally three times as much money I was making at the hospital. Three months chance. Were you like, how many years out of college? You were four or five? Um, so I was a year, I was two years post my um post my master's degree. Okay. And so I wanna say seven years bachelor's maybe. Right. Twenty seven. Yeah. The most important thing I want the audience to hear is that you were able to switch careers with just the skills you had. Like you switched multiple careers. You know, there's some people like, just stick with a job, just stay there. And I'm like, no, it's something you learn what you must learn. And you take that and you go to the next thing. Like, you keep moving forward. I mean, people who are in their 30s and 40s, I've been in this job 12 years. I'm like, you mean raises you to miss out on? You know, I mean, like opportunities to grow. It's like, okay, I just want people to understand that. Like, change is important. She's changed her title multiple times. The last one was IT auditor. Go ahead. And I, I sat there for a season um, and I ended up auditing all of the EHRs in the state of South Carolina that received Medicaid funding. Um, so I was able to go in there back in security risk analysis. Like I, I went in because I already knew it. I built I built it, built the front of it. So if you didn't you build. The front and the back. So, right. So I knew what to go in. I knew what to look for. I knew where their mistakes were, especially with certain cheap ones. But I'm not going to name those because I don't. You know, want nobody to come get me, but um, we're not going to do that here. South Carolina, they beat you right, up. right? They're not going to be like, you know, you know. So, um, for the most part, so I I went in, um, and then at that time, um, my bureau chief was like, hey, um, I don't have time to sit on on these meetings, uh, talking about uh the Affordable Care Act. I ain't got time. Look, can you can you sit in and do whatever they ask you to do or help them? And at first I was like, okay. Um, and so that's how I really started opening up more about what the Affordable Care Act was. Um, because certain hospitals, if they're nonprofit, they get um bad a bad debt allowance, meaning that they get money, um, a percentage of money based off of the bad debt that they have, meaning that people do not pay their medical bills, right? So um, looking at the percentage of it and um, they want to make sure that each um, each claim that they paid on as far as a percentage of bad debt, that they actually went through the steps to make sure that they didn't have any other options as far as insurance. So sitting there um, through the state of South Carolina, working with agency head from there, um, gave me a lot of exposure um, when it came down to what is needed and what's required because I worked from the bottom of of a hospital through the ranks from that standpoint. Um, so I sat there for about four and a half years. I maxed out a salary there. I was just like, there's nothing left for me to Listen, do. I got to get the salaries <laughs> up. Okay, <no>. Right. <laughs> 
So I transitioned, um, ended up getting a position. Um, I looked at my skill set. I looked at everything that I had. I was like, shoot, I've got from um, the nursing home to assistant living. I've got hospitals, doctors, dentists, yeah, you know, did then did it all. But I didn't have public health. Right. Um, so I'm a health girl. I'm a health tech girl. I love health care. There's always sick people. There's always there's always something to fix. There's always something to do from prescriptions, from um, preventative things. So I'm a healthcare girl, healthcare tech girl. And I tell people that it just works for me. It makes sense to me. Right. Um, and so I ended up getting a position as the WIC Technology Service Unit Manager. WIC stands for Women, Infant, and Children. Mm -hmm. um, they were in the process of trying to implement a new technology system. Um, this system was um, was a federally mandated um, by the Hungry Kin Kids Act of 2010. So I'm going to pause Hungry, right here. The Hungry Kids Act? Of the Hungry Kids Act of 2010, where they required every program, mm -hmm. um, WIC, the WIC program to be electronic. So it used to have like the WIC checks where people go in yeah, and be like, here's my check. Yeah, right. <laughs> And so because of that act, um, we were able to push, they were able to push the federal mandate, gave funding for it. Um, I came in the door. I thought I was going to be the co-pilot. I was like, you know, I'm come in, just going to learn, you know, kind of help push the narrative because they already had a project manager there, right? So I start sitting here and I'm like, this dude gatekeeping, like, I know something else, something else he's not telling, right? And right. So um, I I was given my marching orders. You you know your job is to learn everything that he knows. I said I looked at him. Okay, information. right. So I was like, okay, cool. And that's exactly what I did. I found out stuff. I was reading. Reading is key. If you you know reading is key. If you can read and comprehend and put things together, it's not hard. Like I sat there and I was like, wait a minute. Now this the red. This is the system. Why is the system underdeveloped? <laughs> this is not what they're paying for. Um, something that I'm really big on, I'm big on advocating for other people. I'm very big on advocating for other people. Uh, because I'm like, this don't make sense. The math ain't math. And so I started building relationships with the vendors, the vendors that we were in contract with. And I was like, hey, I want to make sure that I'm not looking at this. You know, um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You yeah. know, but if I'm I'm smelling this smoke, this fire, and so and it was fires. It it, it was a lot of fires. Yeah. <laughs> all you, that went you just on. Was and, for it. You're like, I smell smoke over here. Right. I'm going to find right. out what it is. Because every project, um, every project has has its fires. I don't care. It's no perfect project, but when it's affecting close to over close to a hundred thousand people of our population, women and children, infants and children, no. Nah. My mother used to be on WIC. Sorry, you know, know what it is, you know. So it's like, I'm not, you know, what if, what if this is somebody's mother, this is somebody's child, this is someone's infant. So we can't fail, we can't slip, we got to go. And wait, wait, so wait, before um, you say that, though, before you continue, yes, yeah. I, I just want people to always realize, like, when it comes to federal jobs and government instruction, like everybody bashed the bottom here, but I'm like, it ushered in a new era of stuff. That's why they were so mad at it because the old way of doing things was a wrap. It was all going digital. It was all going electric. Now you had this, like, basically this bundle package. Y'all going to do it today or you going to do it tomorrow? What's your choice? And so um, when things are electronic, you can't hide. Can't hide. Can't hide. You know, major, you know, listen. The way things are electronic now, Brett Favre getting that $8 million. I don't know who in Mississippi didn't tell him. Well, baby, it's all electronic now. We can see where the money goes, okay? We can tell if it ain't up, it's nothing. So I just wanted to. But finish, finish. I want you to. Are oh, you good? And so I was just like, I was like, okay. So I started putting pieces together, started building relationships with the team because you're just as strong, you're just as strong as your team is. So I, I didn't talk to so much of the managers. I talked to the people that actually did the work. Mm -hmm. Not saying I disrespected their managers because I didn't, but I wanted to talk to the ones that are there, that are boots on the ground. And so I started building rapports with them, understanding their processes and procedures. Um, understanding what the regs say based off of what the system is mm -hmm. and so they ended up um, out of some other things end up letting um, that project manager go um, right after UAT um, they let them go um, from that standpoint and it was such a relief 
because it was just like now we can really go and so we band together um came out literally uh we moved the project schedule where it was supposed to be released in march of 2020 we end up going to pilot may the 1st 2019 listen so one person ain't gonna stop the show the show got to go on Right. And then understanding, you know, from a project manager's mindset, I was just like, yeah, we can do this. We can do data migration here. Let's start practicing. We had an amazing VA um, that we started practicing data migration stage and stage and stage and stage and um, just making sure that things are good. Then on the other side of the house, making sure that our EBT environment was good as well. So this is the connectivity from the um, MIS system to the stores, to the stores back to um, the MIS system to say, hey, you got enough benefits on here. So they had level three testing. I mean, we worked together um, to get us to that to that point. And we also developed a mobile app. So I was very um, heavily involved in um, developing the app just because of the accessibility. So just out of a poll, I always look to see the numbers. The numbers tell a story. It doesn't tell everything, but it kind of tells a story. And so I'm like, well, we have a text message system. And I see that 87,000 people respond to this text message. Let's go ahead and release this app, right? right. So um, we released the app. Um, of course, you had your bugs and different things of that such, but we had a really good vendor um, that was real hands-on. Um, got us to um, November at the last rollout of the state. Um, and then 2020 comes in, January, February, March happens. It's COVID. Well, before you go into COVID, the app was to like help them see their benefits or help them see their balance. Like they got called one hundred number, touch tone stuff kind of thing. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So they were able to see their benefits. If there was a recall on milk, right. if there was a recall on eggs, we were able to push um, push notifications through um, from that standpoint. Um, and just basically, basically, they're able to scan as well. So if they go in the store and they scan, and it's like, oh. This is not WIC approved. This is not a part of my package. All right, let me put that back sure. um, and let me pick up what is needed. Mm -hmm. so, so do you think the manager over you was just delaying the project or he didn't know? He just didn't know how to move the forward faster? Um, that project, he was a project manager. So he knew certain things, mm -hmm. but he didn't know everything. And it's okay because you don't know everything, right? But it's how the way you treat people. Right. You, you've got to treat people right. I'm sorry. You can agree to disagree, but you don't have to disrespect people. You know, yeah, um, you can more. get a lot. Yeah, you can get a lot more with honey. You really can. Um, and and letting people know that their voice matters. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're the SME and they've been there a while, guess what? Give them the opportunity to shine. You don't have to take, you don't have to take their shine at the end of the day because they did the work. I shout out my team all the time. Like, hey, look, yes, I, I know. Yeah, I came in. I, was, I did two roles at one time. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, at the end of the day, I wanted my team to stand. I feel like as a leader, you have to build the stage in order for your people to stand. You know, um, because your knowledge is your knowledge. But if you don't push people forward, you just waste some time. You just hold the title, but you have no substance. Mm -hmm. So um, really big on just pushing people forward, encouraging them. Um, and that's what happened. So after that, we ended up um, going through COVID. Mm -hmm. um and then from COVID other ideas started spinning like I was just like you know all right our clinics are closed to a certain extent um however is there a way that we can do a WIC pre-screening online application where they can upload their documentation prior okay. to their appointment yeah. um so we started the development on that um spearheaded that went through that process and it was a long process because some people quit um <laughs> during the middle of some of the developers was like, like you know I, I got to find me something else, um, but we got it to a place. We released it, um, but prior to that, we also released um, Telewick, which is like telehealth. So I helped set up that platform um, to make sure that, you know, for our breastfeeding mothers, if they need help, if they need any assistance, our high risk, um, high risk participants that may have diabetes, different things of that such, um, being able to help push our nutrition team to get that done. And then um, the WIC pre-screening online application, um, that was amazing. Um, I was so happy when it went live and it was like, we did like, we was like, okay, we're gonna release it Monday, you know, do a stop. Next thing, you know, I'm, I messed the time up or something in my head, I don't know. 
they released it that Friday and we already had like less than an hour. We had 120 applications sitting in the queue. Yeah. So um, I always tell people I, I like healthcare tech, but I like tech that helps make people life better. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, right. but for the most part, you know, a lot of people sit on their phones. <laughs> you it. upload, right. You, you upload things with your phones. It's like many computers in your hands. So, um, so that was one of my my exciting moments. Um, I had to do a demo at the Black Expo of Columbia to kind of talk about the ins and outs of it, and then also work with um, participants that were there and say, "Hey, you ready? You ready for your appointment? Let's go ahead and set this up for you." Um, and everything was secure from that standpoint. And so then I was offered a position as the director of the project management office um, at the Department of Health and Environment Control, which is about to be the Department of Public Health. Um, because we're going through an agency split right now. And so I took that position in June. Um, and I mean, literally it's like 16 people. Um, I have technology, tech, tech PMs. I have program PMs um, from that standpoint. And so I just ride the wave. I just ride Listen, the wave. <laughs> I think you understand like the most important part of your story is that you've been able to keep growing, keep going. I mean, because most people are like, I can't be a nurse. Oh, I hate healthcare. I don't want to be in healthcare anyway. And they go do something completely different. But it's like, if you enjoy that field, there's a million jobs around that field. Yes. They're, you're not limited. There's lots of opportunity. So you can director. So, you know, somebody's going to ask, well, how can I get into tech? They always ask that. Or if I'm in a nurse, how do I go from nursing to tech? Or if I'm in the medical, you know, a lab person, how do I go from lab to tech? And I would say, what is like the most general advice you could probably give them out of hearing your story today? Be flexible. One thing I always did, every position I've ever been in, I always made sure I had a friend in HR. And I also had a friend in, in, in the tech area. Always. Still to this day. Hey, HR. Of HR? course, you know. You know, HR it is what it is. You know, you have to be careful to a certain yeah. extent. However, having a friend in tech. And so um, being in there and just learning and then looking at what other jobs have. So I'm like, oh, I didn't build a whole part of an EHR system. You got a whole portfolio. You got a new Yeah, let me, let me put this on here. Let me put this on here. Mm -hmm. Looking at those transferable skills. Um, Again, like I said, I didn't find tech, tech found me. Um, and then it led me into project manager, management. And so my mentor, he told me, he said, um, I said, well, you know, I'm like three semesters away from getting, finishing my doctorate in health administration. He's like, look, I'm going to tell you something. He said, your project management your certificate is going to take you a lot further. It's going to take you a lot further than a doctor degree. Now, if you do it, that's all you. That is all you. <laughs> Um, but also having like good people, good, good people around you too. Um, that's going to tell you the truth. And so I took my certification, um, class for 35, um, 35 hours, took that, mm -hmm. um, went through some transition, um, dealing with a, 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 my father had passed away two years ago, but, um, dealing with him being on hospice as well as me, you know, getting married. It was just a lot. And I was so, like, sorry to hear that. And also, oh, congratulations. It's like, <laughs> thank you. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm sorry. I was be a little up but oh you good and I just literally I sat there and I was just like oh I gotta take this test I paid for the test I'm like I'm gonna take it this year take it this year year passed almost a year passed and my father passed away in January and I was just like man 2020 I was like 2022 we coming in a year like this you know Rough. um and I said okay so that March um they had changed the test well they had changed the test to um from the waterfall to the agile part of it and I was like hmm let me go ahead and get my certified scrum master let me go ahead and get that through scrum alliance took a weekend course through that um learned about you know scrum I already I was already doing it so it was nothing for me to do so I already knew the concept of it um so I passed that then I said all right I gotta take this PMP so I told my husband um, my husband's also a software engineer as well um he I mean he has a journey right he has a journey he has a journey he 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 went through a lot to get there but um he's amazing at it and so I said 
all right. I said, well, they, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I can't go in. I don't, you know, I like to go in mm -hmm. um, into a test center and, and take it. But I took it at home. It was like the last day. That's tough. I didn't. So relaxed at home versus the actual test center. Right. Right. Um, I didn't even really say I bought all these books to study. Bought all these books to study. Um, did not study <laughs> at all. So I did like the little Quizlet. You know, I was like, all right, PMO, uh, project management test, you know. So I went through Quizlet, you know. Um, so I told my husband, I was like, well, if I pass, I pass. You know, he's like, you're going to pass. I'm like, well, study for it, you know. Took that test and passed it the first time. Um, and I was just like, wow. Like, I, I sat there. I said, let me take a picture, you know, because I don't want them to take it back. <laughs> I took the picture of it and um and I sent my mentor and the person that I reported to at that time and another mentor I said y'all know my price just went up right I hope y'all know my price just went up because I'm telling you so expensive now. hey if you don't you don't have the money I'm gonna find the money and so um I ended up in the, the position as a director um and in June so um truly excited for the opportunity I always encourage people like hey you know, sacrifice. If you can put clothes on Kalarna, you can you you can put these courses on a Kalarna payment. <laughs> if you can, you can go to Beyonce. You you can go to Beyonce. You can, you can to Beyonce. Man, on her, a nothing wrong with Beyonce. I love her. Beyonce on a firm. Right, but you can also pay and invest in yourself because it's one thing about. Investing in clothes, that's that's depreciating. But investing in yourself, can't nobody take that away from you, you know, um, from that standpoint. And so um ended there, um, not ended there, but ended up in the project management office. And I mean, it's like agency split here, we're splitting and we're doing this. And I'm like, okay, and then we got this going on, and now we got that. So now I'm working on a very mass, mass majority. Um, of monitoring um, of enterprise of close to 37 projects mm -hmm. that my team is doing and utilizing from that standpoint um, and just making making the life of, of our, our areas better, you know, um, when it comes down to delivering services for um, our state. So um, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm still learning, still looking, still researching. Well, but, that's, but that's kind of what it is. You have to keep learning. Like, I think people are so, um, I think they think I'm going to take this one cert. I'm going to take this one thing, right? And then that's it. I don't have to do anything else. I just show up. I got my one cert. But I feel like anything in tech or anything, just a period in life, you're going to constantly be learning. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're going to yeah. constantly learn. You're going to constantly grow. Um, you're going to constantly change. And that's kind of what it is. And then also finding mentors that are already in the field. Um, one thing that I that I jump on on Facebook to have um, black women in project management, I jump in that group and I'm listening and, you know, they're like, oh, master's degrees don't, you know, it don't mean nothing. Well, hey, it may not be for you, but hey, it, hey I'm making more on, you know, on a job. Like, wow, like I didn't, you know, um, from that standpoint, but also the comfortability um, that allows me to be able to work, still work full time and run a business and to be able to invest money into a business um, to help other people make money, you know, mm -hmm. um, to help other people get to their next level. You know, whether it be I need some extra money for the kids, you know, for school or I need to put a deck on my house. Um, all of the cleaners that work for me, every last one of them, they started off not owning a home exception of one um after they've worked with me for about two years guess what they're owning their own home if they didn't have a car they got a car like you know them. um they have the deed and title i'm serious about that mm -hmm. because i always speak life over my employees like hey this house right here this ain't nothing to compare to what god is going is gonna do you know and sometimes they're cleaning houses that are smaller than their houses and they have some very nice homes Hey, you know, listen. when it comes down to it, they went from renting to owning, you right. know, and so I'm really big on encouraging people, pushing people, meeting people where they are, Um, you know, I always tell people, hey, I can go from the White House to the Trap House. It don't matter. I'm no, not the White House. Where you are. Yes. To the no. Church House. 
I oh, mean, okay, yeah, okay. church house too. Okay. All of it, you all know. Of it. <laughs> all of it, you know. This is basically what I'm saying is that you 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 have to be flexible. You have to be that adjustable wrench. You For know, sure. you have to be able to meet people where they are, encourage them where they are. You know, everybody doesn't have happy endings or happy beginnings, and so wherever you can meet them at, encourage them and push them, it goes a long way. Right. And so kind of with the switch on this, because this probably part part of this I'll cut, but probably not um, split into two. But what made you start a cleaning company? Because like you're doing all this stuff in tech, you're learning, you're studying a master, you're getting married, you out here living life, you're doing a lot. And then you say, you know what, I'm gonna start a cleaning company. What where did that come in? What what made you start that? So I always been cleaning. Like I will pick cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> I need a, a little extra little money. Hey, I'm I'm a clean. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Um, and then I put it down, and you know, then I'm like, oh snap, I need to do this, do this, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so I always clean it. I always been in the back, in the background. Um, from even from the age of six, I used to clean with my grandmother. My grandmother was yeah. a domestic worker. Um, she worked, you know, um, she worked for white people, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that or not, but she did. Uh, you said she <laughs> do it. And so she, uh, she, she took care of their kids, you know, um, she did what she had to do, you know. Um, and then my mother, my mother, um, when I tell you work ethic, work ethic like no other, mm -hmm. like my mother's work ethic. Um, she's in her 70s, she's retired now, but her work ethic, like I, she still helps me in my business, in my cleaning business. She still helps in the cleaning business. You got business. that woman working still. Oh, Lord. And look, she, hey, she be like, you know, I want to put a deck on the back of my house. So, uh, you know, I'm like, Ma, you don't have to worry. I just want to make my, you know, her, my, her, and my pop pops, my bonus dad, uh -huh. they are true. So, um, but yeah, she helps me in my business, you know, and so I decided to say, hey, um, I need to get out of some debt. Right. To be honest. Um, mm -hmm. start working, 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 working full time right. and then cleaning at night. Working full time, right. cleaning at night, cleaning on weekends. Um, pay pay the debt off. Okay. And so my boyfriend at the time, you know, which he's now my husband, was like, you know what? You know, I got clients now. He was like, Well, what's stopping you? He's one of my biggest encouragers. He's like, Love. what is stopping you? Like why why are you why are you hesitant? You good at it. Like, you know, you could train other people to be good at it too. And so he gifted me. He didn't gift me a bag. Mm -hmm. He gifted me um my LLC. And he was like, here's the money. Open up your account. Here's everything. You know, do what you need to do. And so um that was the um the resurrection of um Miss Annie's janitorial and decluttering service. Well it's Miss Ann Treese. I'm going through a trademark right now. Thanks. Um <laughs> because um you know I was just you know I was like okay and so I started kind of learning. I already knew like as far as like contracts and stuff like that. I knew what to look for, what not to look for. I have really good um inner circle people that's uh -huh. like, hey let me look at this. Let me see how you structure this. And I'm still learning. That's why I was at that conference. I'm still right. learning. I don't know everything. Right. Um and I'm just sitting there and I'm learning and I'm connecting with people because I've always been a likable person um, right. just because you have to be nice and friendly to people. Um, in order for them to like you. You know, you, you can't you know, be nasty. Listen, <laughs> listen, we're from the South. You know what I'm saying? We, right. we're be, there's some nasty, nice folks out there. There's some of them. But we right. are nice in comparison. So right. I always say, hey, it don't hurt nobody. Open your mouth. Hey, how you doing? Open your mouth, speak and wave and go on about your day. It doesn't hurt right. anything. So, because you just never know who you never know who your next business partner is. You never yeah. know who your next contract is. You never know who your next client is. You know, mm -hmm. um, from that standpoint. And so, I'm um, just learning about the industry and what it has to give. Um, it allowed me to be able to be a blessing, um, to my community where I come from in Saluda. I'm partner with my family. Like, hey, we got this nonprofit that's sitting here dormant. Why? Like, let's do this. So it helped encourage, because of my yes, it helped encourage and push um, my family to be a blessing to other people as well. And so um, just loving it, loving um, the flexibility. Um, do I know if it's going to come to a crossroads where I'm going to have to choose check tech or entrepreneurship full time? I don't know. I'm just going to ride the wave. 
Right. I'm going to ride the wave. I'm not making no definites. I'm not making no promises. I'm not scared of it. My father was an entrepreneur. Right. So I've seen seen the ins and outs of that. He owned real estate. He owned um, gas stations, like different things of that sort. So right. I'm not scared of it by any means. Um, but I just like to make sure that I'm calculated in what I do. I know, because you're um, very much government. You've been in government a minute now. So, you know, sometimes people in government be like, risk, not me. Right. <laughs> um what, do you focus mainly on residential cleaning or commercial cleaning we do them both mm -hmm. i don't leave the money on the table from commercial residential i'm serious yeah. I, I don't understand like i everybody's structure is different for me for sure. i'm like hey if i quote it we can do it we're gonna get the job done period okay. right, right, right. um and so just because why am i gonna leave fifteen hundred dollars on the table mm -hmm. i'm gonna pay my staff i'm gonna pay what i need to pay but hey that's residual income, right? Right. You know, so um, we do residential, commercial. We do decluttering, meaning we do um, we work with people that have um, depressive episodes where right. they may Boys. not want to clean up. They just go into, you know, uh, you know, episode and they call us because it's no judgment. You right. know, I don't post everything and I'm like, hey, I've been there before and mm -hmm. I have. I've had some really low moments, but very grateful. Um for God, very grateful for the word of God, very grateful for the people that God has surrounded me around. Right. Um, and so it pushed me and therapy. Um, it pushed me out of out of places. So yeah. um, I go Listen. in with that same mindset. I know exactly where you are. It's it is okay. It happens. Okay. If your clothes ain't folded they on the floor. It is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Everybody does not go into, you know, some people live in dirty. They they live in dirty, you know, yeah. um, just because of their mindset. But hey, you're a real person, and it's okay to be human. Right. Um, and I think sometimes in in our community, having a cleaner, they're like, oh, well, I don't feel like I. I'm you're like, lazy, yeah. or you, you yeah, know, you're lazy. You're doing too much. And, you right. know, the thing is buying back your time. Yes. You know, and I, I I've been one of those people that be just grinding all day and night. People like. Well, if you're not mopping your floors and cleaning your house top to bottom, you're a bum. It's like, man, if you don't get that weirdo shit out of here. Like, I remember <laughs> telling somebody I had a cleaner. They're like, but you don't have kids. And I was like, so? What that mean? Right. I was like, everybody house needs to be deep clean every like spring, fall or once a month or every other month. And so like, I think, I think we're, more millennials are embracing it because it's yeah. like they grew up with parents who had a lot of clutter, Right. You look back at a lot of those jokes about millennials, like why millennials want to be mentalistic? Because they grew up with parents with clutter. They, you know, they realize the importance of how um, how important buying back your time is. Whether it's food, cooks, chefs, cleaners, all that stuff, it's it helps. It helps free yes. up a few hours. And um, I always tell people, especially women, I always encourage them. Yes, we are our mother's daughter, but we're not our mothers. You know, our mothers had to go through survival mode because that's all they knew, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, I said, but then they laid the foundation for us to thrive. So there's no excuse, you know, um, especially uh, my postpartum mothers, you know, um, dealing yeah. with children under the age of two. Um, you know, I have mothers that I, I help a lot. You know, we're like, hey, let's set a plan together. Let's do this every every two weeks. So let's do this every week. You know, when you get your tax money, I mean, I have like tax, you know, uh, the tax checks come in. They like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and pay for this mm -hmm. for a whole year. Listen and knock it, okay. get it over with. It's worth it. Get it over with. Yep. And they know exactly what they're getting. They know the team member that's coming in. They know what accommodations we have, what we don't have. Um, and by me being in tech, that's why my uh website is so nice. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes down to it, I hired um this lady out of Denver, Colorado. I could have done it, but I was just like, no, nah, I just rather give her the money to do it. Um, Ruby okay, Consultant. Yeah, Ruby Consultant, like she, she is amazing. She built, um, she built my website out, coded, uh, my pictures so they can pull up on. I mean, she, she's good. She's good at what she does, uh, with it. And so she, um, we're getting ready to do a rebrand. Um, right. I have a new logo, so we're about to do a rebrand. Um, especially because of the trademark as well, nice. so we can go ahead and take it to the next level. And then coming to the conference at CBN conference, I was like, eh. come on, man, we was bringing it. Oh, I be stalking Aaron, you know, uh, about his podcasts and YouTube and stuff like that. And so 
Um, he is so cool, so dope. And to see him in person, like in real life, mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like that was just really, um, really cool just because I come from that government side. So I knew exactly who he was, what he was talking about. Um, and then he answered my question on funding. And that'll be another episode because I don't want to take too much of your time. <laughs> no, <laughs> but for the uh, we'll, we'll put it on another episode. But I would think uh, I would say out of your cleaning company, how many like how many of your contract or how much per percentage of your company is government contracted? So we work with like during COVID, mm -hmm. um, there were like a lot of um, like purchase orders, like where certain uh, cities had like maybe twenty thousand dollars and they say hey for twenty thousand dollars for 60 days can you come in and wipe doorknobs wipe so door no okay. say that again <laughs> oh, everybody put government contracts in the comments okay you said they had tw a purchase order twenty thousand right just a purchase order. like they can basically meaning that they don't have to go through any bidding process. They don't have to just have to make sure that you're registered through the state of South Carolina, that you're able to meet their scope of work, right? Mm. Um, and they're like, hey, we got this COVID money. We need COVID cleaning mm -hmm. um, to a certain extent. We just need, and the scope of work was like wiping doorknobs, wiping, um, you know, the the elevators, wiping the, the knobs on the elevators, just just keep wiping it. We need that done. <laughs> You know, so how much wiping do we get for twenty grand? You know what I mean? Twenty grand. They like, they like. I said, y'all better make sure it smell like like salt or something because you gonna, you know, you know, the work cleaners from the conference. I got one of those at the house. I was like, that's what you need. One of them stick them somewhere so they think it's extra clean in here. Right, and I, I was like, you know, so I mean, so we picked up money from there, and then also like the like so the dorms, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. the dorms, like. That right there, working with a con a contractor that I do work with or whatever, um, truly, truly, uh, truly, truly amazing. Gave me my one of my first starts, um, in the contract field when we came down to to off campus dorms, and so like once I learned, he critiqued me. I mean, my first, he was like, mm -hmm, "This ain't right," and he went from A, B, C, D. He was like, "Are you offended?" I was like, "Not, not offended." Because if I get this right, that means I'm gonna kill everything else. Like I'm, right. you know, what I'm saying like I, you know, I'm able to write down process and procedures. I'm able to, you know, when my team goes into homes, you know, um, and they're like, oh, this is this is light work, you know, right. uh, from that standpoint. But we also, like I said, we do deal with people um, that go through depression, different things like that. We have clean trap houses, so that's why I made the the plug there. Clean um, it all. <laughs> we clean it all. And so um, sometimes I'll put my rookies, um, people that I'm testing out just to see if they can hang in the field with me when it comes down to right. two dorms, because you always bid your highest because you just never know what you may get. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may get something that's pretty simple. And then sometimes you get like, what was y'all doing in here? You know, from that standpoint. So um, I put my rookies in, my rookies killed it. Dorm season came, they were able to just move, move, move to the next one. Um, with no go back and so it's a process um have I made mistakes in business absolutely absolutely <laughs> absolutely and what I do is I learn from them I'm like oh I can't do this no more let me put this here let me put mm -hmm. that here let me put you know because you need the calculated clean app <laughs> yeah it's it's I mean and so much it was more so dealing with like people because it's one thing uh, dealing in the government government sector right. of hiring people because you go through the screening and you go through this. I had to put that same mindset in my business, right? That same mindset of going through thorough things, looking at things. Okay, all right. I'm gonna give you. You know, you don't even get a a logo, a t shirt with my logo on there until you've been with me for a while. I'm not right. gonna invest in giving you a collar shirt. Nope, I'm invest giving you a black or white shirt and give you a smile until you earn that i'm not i'm not gonna start you off here because i got to see your level of growth right. and once i see your level of growth then i'm able to say okay i'm able to invest you know they're making more money than i was making back when i was in you know so i always try to make sure i take care of them um i always try to make sure i look out for them um when it comes down to it making sure that payroll is straight um, making sure my my back end is straight um, mm -hmm. with QuickBooks from account systems, direct deposits, different things with that such. Making sure that contracts, if I am doing any subcontracting with anyone, always make sure my contracts are straight um, from that standpoint. So therefore, I can get what I need. They can get what they right. need. Um, but it's also, you know, when it comes down to payments, you know, mm -hmm. this is when you're going to pay me. I'm not doing no net thirty. No, we we gonna we gonna okay. 
like every <laughs> seven days. No. Not doing on their thirties. Um, unless it's something like I, you know, they can't just from regulations or something like that, then I kind of work with you a little bit mm -hmm. with that. But for the most part, just just running it, um, looking to expand on the federal level when it comes down to contracts, um, just because it's just so much up there. Um, when it comes down to it, I was looking after the conference, I was like, let me look on spam.gov. I was like, oh, oh. Okay, let me see who. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so put myself in position, um, to be able to go after that, but also put myself in perspective, um, to make sure that my business is structured properly, so therefore I can get the funding that's needed, um, to be able to go after those contracts as well. Okay. Listen, I like it. I like it. Good information. Listen, look at you. I love it. <laughs> I love it for real. Um. Because what happens is so many people assume, so many people assume that, um, unfortunately, they, they think business should be easy, right? I started, I got the ideal, here it is, it's making money two weeks later. And I just want, I just always want to keep bringing on people to the channel that are either doing tech or doing actual blue collar service businesses. Because, I mean, for your area, you see a lot of growth potential, correct? Oh, yeah. And then, too, it's like, you know, um, being in your community, like you mentioned about, you know, joining your chamber, you know, um, going to events, sponsoring a little league team. I sponsored uh, my business, sponsored a girls basketball team, an inner city okay. one, um, buying Kyrie's, you know, before the transition with Kyrie's. Kyrie, like, Kyrie. Buying the Kyrie's. Kyrie's. And they like, the shoes. Yeah, the shoes, they like, oh. okay, okay. You bought a team full of shoes, the Kyrie's. I don't know what those are, but my boot thing over here knows what those are. I'm pretty sure Kyrie's look great. Kids love them. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially when he was going through the transition. So, you know, I was like, yeah, let's hurry up and order this before we don't know what's going to happen. You might get but, rich. Um, we got right, it. so let's, let's go ahead and get this Um, and to be able just to be present. Like, you know, sometimes it, you know, they knew, uh, they knew, oh, Miss B, she got the money, you know, that's the money lady, you know, uh, she come in buying the whole team. And then if it didn't fit, I didn't send them back. I just gave them to the boys. They I was like, you don't fit. Ain't no, you the don't boys need it. Go. Yeah. So it was like, I basically, <laughs> basically almost literally uh, boys and girls. I was like, hey, if it, don't, it ain't no use to me sending back. Who else need these shoes? Hey, yeah. come in. Your feet move like shoes off. Get your feet yeah, out. Yeah, Charlie's on. They like, oh, man, thank you. you know. And so I, I just re recognize and I just appreciate my mother posting checks to my coach for my shoes, you know. Um, and don't so cash it this week, baby. Right. Don't do <laughs> She'll be like, please, I wrote tell, the date your coach. please tell your coach. Uh, the date this the date. This the date. Don't, don't, don't cash it. Cash it on this time, you know. So um, so like, right. So just to be able to pay it for it for other people, like that's what it's about. Like if you you just making money for you, it it ain't it's not gonna last. Like that's that's my my perspective. Um, go ahead. I was gonna say we're meant for connect, create, contribute, and be compensated. So the yes. compensation is feeling good. The contribution is the shoes, right? The calories, right? So I mean, at the end of the day, it's like their shoes to you, which may not be a thing. You know, like okay, there's some shoes from kids. But for one of those kids at that school, man, that changed their semester, you know? Right. And right. That's what and so I was just like, you know, so every time they see me, I, I still there in high school now, you know. Um, and they like, hey. You know? And I'm like, how you doing? You know? Um, and something one of the coaches was telling me, they was like, they never saw a female as tall as you real girly. Like, you know, I'm coming here with the okay. nail. So, so let's, let's do this. Let's do this. You guys, for the record, the, I know it's a 30 second delay. How tall do you think she is? Put it in the chat. How tall do you think she is? Put it in the chat. I'm going to give them a little bit of seconds. Anyway, so you said they come in there girly. And I'm going to ask you what your height is in a little bit. But coming in there right. girly, coming there dressed up, throwing out the shoes, you're balling, you grow up in your Cadillac. You know, they're like, yes. <laughs> the Honda Accord that's paid for that has the need in title. Listen, I don't. Hey, I, that's that's the life. People made fun of me for a long time. I'm like, look, the paid off little car is it. Everything else, right. get out. Of here. 
Everybody wants to bless me with something else. Like I, I live a simple life. I drove my old one Honda Accord until like I got the engine repair and then it started tearing up again. I used to have oh. like one quarter so old, like hold on, let me pour this in here. I mean I had a steady hand, like oh eight, man. One, yeah, two, it was like, three. like I check it, be like, all right, I'm good. I can go to where I need to go. Stop, make sure I have some more oil, pour it in there, check it, you know, from that standpoint. Um, because I did whatever I needed to do to get out of debt. So I was like, a car note is not in the I could afford the car uh-huh. note, but I couldn't afford the car. Right. If that makes sense. My sister so, came out here and bought a five hundred dollar Honda, like a Honda Civic green from one of uh-huh. the ladies at church, one of the older ladies who's like, Baby, you need a car. Here's five hundred, you know, I'm gonna sell it for five hundred dollars. If I'd have thought about it, I'd have kept it, but she got it for five hundred dollars. Her and my mom, they flew in. They drove back to North Carolina in that car. She kept that car for about a good two years, two three years. She wrecked it. But people look down on them car. Them car that's a good car. If you pay, yes. he's doing what he got to do. Yes, and so I I kept it mm-hmm. um, until it was time. I was like, I can't. You know, I was trying to save it. I was like, oh, Sam, I just you know. Um, <laughs> End up getting the 2018 brand new car. Never, you know, people are like, oh, you're not supposed to buy a brand. Look, I wanted a brand new car. Never had a brand new I car. I always that. had, yeah, I had the point A to point B cars. Um, so now she's paid off, and I'm I'm gonna ride that into the sunset. You know, <laughs> uh, with that. So. <laughs> so listen, if people want to talk to you, they want to. They're like, man, I need to talk to her. I want to consult with her. Are you set up for that, or you you just say, hey, let me think about it for now yeah um i don't have like a link or anything like that they can find me on linkedin mm-hmm. um bettina um bennett hyphen walker mm-hmm. um i'm not really on facebook i'm on facebook i'm not really on facebook right. um i'm not even going go so how front. did you promote your business if you weren't on facebook you were like promoting instagram you're promoting word of mouth flyers how are you promoting it uh-oh thank you froze hello yeah i can hear you yeah, you just froze. Yeah, you back. You back. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. It's just not, the screen's not moving. Oh. It's okay. Now you're back. You're back. Say, talk. Let me see. Hello. You. Okay. Okay. Hey, okay. There you go. Um, but yeah. How did you, yeah, how did you market your business? Um, so I market my business, um, social media, Mm -hmm. social media has been my big, um, I've done mailers, I've done word of mouth, um, my, my sweet spot, my VIPs, of course, are my, my, um, Uh oh, thank you for freezing up again. My relatives. There's, everybody wants to move. So, um, here hold on, hold on, hold on, Bettina. Okay, now I say it. You okay. said your realtors. Yes, my realtors. Yes, my realtors. Those are my sweet spots. Um, because one of my mentors, I have mentors in different areas. Um, but what my first mentor, um, in my cleaning business was a realtor. Mm-hmm. Um, she gave me my first one of my first opportunities to be able to do a move out clean. Mm-hmm. Um, so they could stage the house and different things like that. Um, learn, learn. I mean, when I say learn, made mistakes, um, learn from it, cried my eyes out. Like, I just want to take a job. You know, beat myself up, talking right. negative. And she's like, absolutely not, because you got a house the next day. Let's get it. Let's keep like, going. Let's keep going. Um, let's put those policy and procedures in place. Let's make sure you do walkthroughs afterwards. After that is done and it's done, make sure you put your deposit in place. If you don't know this person, you know, it's not a refer. You know, so um, Miss Lisa Keys, um, I always like she's she's amazing. She's such a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Um, gave me a lot of opportunities when I first started my cleaning business. Met her at the nail salon, actually. Didn't know her from a can of paint. And <laughs> He, she was like, you got some on your shirt. And I was like, oh, okay, on my pants. And I went out, I was like, oh, thank you. And she's like, what do you do? I said, well, I just got finished coming from decl- decluttering um, this lady's home and um, and different things like that. And she's like, yeah, cleaning business. I was like, yeah, yeah I have clean business. Because I was doing nothing but decluttering first. 
And then um, she gave me an opportunity. And so from that opportunity, I, I, I told her, I was like, hey, I made, made it to my hundred house. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say thank you, you know, for being able to to coach me um, through through a low moment, very low moment in, in business. Um, you have your highs and your lows, but you have more highs than you, you, you do to anything. But having those right people in your circle to push, motivate and encourage and say, hey, dust yourself off and yep. get back up. You know, um, it, it makes a world of a difference. And sometimes you may not have those people. You have to encourage yourself. You know, right. you have to speak, speak the word of God over your life or speak the word over your business. Speak, speak positively. You know, um, sure. I still do affirmations. I still do affirmations every morning that I get up because I want to make sure that I'm in the right frame of mind. So yeah. therefore, even if my mind does go, I know how to come back to center. So, um, like who saw? Yeah, who saw? yeah, yeah. Cause you have to, you have to, cause if you don't, you be like, who are you talking to? You go off with somebody ain't even about them. <laughs> be like, Hey, Hey, that's I'm, I am Peter. I am Peter. I will, you know, put your ear off. Just come off. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you say what'd you say to me no you have to right. so here's the thing the um there's some great books like the power of a subconscious mind uh joyce meyer did a great book it was so battlefield of the mind yes so you know yes. a lot of times what people think is every day you go out your house and even in your house you're not battling uh bad it, it, it's like literally somebody's energy could be off for 20 minutes and now the rest of your day thrown off and you have to really fight and say this is what I'm doing today. This is where we're going. Everything else is like, I can just let it slide off my shoulders because that's not my battle. I don't know what's going on, but you need to fight the battle in your mind. So, you know, I always salute people that work in offices because you in the office with multiple people. You know what I mean? Right. So, well, we kind of work I mean. from home. Yeah, we kind of work from home. So like I have like days that I, day that I go in and then like, you know, this week I have to go in a lot. Um, just like based off of what we're doing for sure. but for the most part like um and I don't mind going in the office I don't you know neither here or there um but for the most part I like working from home and so I like to stay encouraged and I like you know people to wherever space they feel um is reasonable for them for the most part so um just being able just to do what I need to do you know well I'm gonna wrap it up with this last question it's like uh what's the most stressful thing I would say about your cleaning company like is it cleaning offices is it cleaning homes what's one thing so the audience doesn't think oh she's painting all roses i want them to be like what's one stressful thing um i would say stressful i look at stressful things as opportunities mm -hmm. so trying to um find solutions more solutions to help people mm -hmm. um i go back to COVID. um you had parents that were homeschooling their kids for the first time Ooh. you had them working from home for the first time mm -hmm. and trying to cook for the first you know not cook for the first time but you know Look, some people cook for the first time right <laughs> um living that busy schedule so they like i gotta take his a you i gotta take his softball i gotta do this all i gotta do so they're just there was all over the place and so having to deal in the house um and so coming up with solutions like i'm walking in i'm cleaning i'm like big laundry ain't been done since the last two weeks so I was like, hey, you need somebody to help you with your laundry. Extra they like, yeah, if you can just pack, say less, say less. I went to Target, got them laundry bags. This is your <laughs> bag. This is husband's bag. These are the kids' bag. Please make sure it's separated. Had one of my cleaners take it to the laundromat. Yeah. Charge, charged them. Um, but you know, based off of the loads, folded up nicely, brought it back to the house. Simple. Um, just trying to find solutions that that probably is probably the thing trying to find solutions when you're in you know in homes and stuff and you're like man what can I do to help like how could I structure my business to be able to assist this me because I know this person ain't the only thing showing up that opened up a whole avenue <laughs> in our business um, when the commercial side kind of slowed down during COVID was laundry right. so we did laundry services you know um, for people um, just picking up dropping off hey you want us to purchase your um your 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 fabric softener whatever the case may be if not you can provide it yourself we'll pick it right up we'll take you get it done drop it right back off you know the only thing they had to do is just slide it in the door you know pay the invoice and slide it in the door so that's probably the most on um, that and as well as hiring people finding the right people Finding the right people. Because you're dealing with people. Yeah, I, I'm hiring. 
yeah, I'm hiring every day. I don't care if 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 all of everything is is I'm hiring every day. I've, I've got a list. I got a wait list. I'm hiring every day. Every just day. because you can't put all of your eggs in one basket. I'm not saying I don't love my people, so I don't want y'all. Y'all see this? I love y'all for real in real life. You know that. Um, but at the same time, always hiring, always hiring. Um, because you just never know what may happen. Life may happen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that that is probably the thing it's like do I really want that responsibility to hire more people I don't know but I have no other choice my business is forcing me I have no other choice but right. to do that um from that standpoint clients is not a problem for me finding clients is not a problem finding um workers. right but finding workers and so I don't burn out with people and they be like don't be hired. Miss B, I, 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 don't worry about it I, don't know I got I'll be like but you need I, you know so <laughs> Um, I have a cleaning manager. She she is amazing. Um, another thing too, I tell people is that you have to be careful what you pray for. Right. Be careful what you pray for. Um, because I prayed, I was like, you know, I I need more people, and I want more people. I want to stay in business, and you know, and even though I knew my father was gonna pass away, um, because he had been battling cancer for years, and when he passed away. I thought like I could just because I'm always that that person that's just I'm gonna bounce back I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that you know could not I I was stuck I, I was stuck um mentally I was stuck and um not so much stuck but just in grieving mode I, I'm gonna say it's that it's grief it's grief yeah right? and we know what we gotta get them to do but it's it's grief you miss that person. right and I'm sitting there and I'm like you know do what's work what doing what am I doing this business like you know because he was my business part one of my business partners my parents I'm very close to my parents mm -hmm. um he was a person that I would talk to about business and different things of that such um and so um so like you know I would see emails and I don't feel like answering it and then I end up getting sick with COVID. It was just, it was just a really low moment for me. Mm -hmm. And so the lady that's my cleaning manager she called me and she said Miss B how many people you got on your schedule? Because I keep my own little personal schedule because right. I have some clients that don't want to leave me. They like, I, I trust them, but I love you, you know? And I'm like, I need y'all to, you know? Um, and so they have a schedule and I have just a select few. I don't clean right. a lot, but I have a select few. Um, and she was like, what you got on your schedule? I was like, no, I'm okay. You know, I'm fine, you know? And she's like, mm-mm. She's like, what do you got on your schedule? I was like, just let <laughs> me get the keys. And I have not given them keys back. I haven't not asked for those keys back in two years. I just and, to, you yeah. to have a business, can it run without you? That's can it. You sit down and take a minute. Can you and I me? I took off, like I didn't, I didn't hardly do any cleaning. Um in 2022. I traveled, travel is my therapy. Um, I love travel, love traveling. <laughs> so I was at the DR sitting um in Putacana, sitting on the okay. beach, reflecting. Okay. Um, then okay. from there, um, even the week the weekend that my father passed away, because he didn't he didn't want a funeral. He, we didn't have a funeral. We went to Hawaii for one of our college friends. Um, got she got married. So I was DC scuba I mean, jumping off in the water with finding Nemo. You know, and in Hawaii is so pretty. So you can't you can't be sad in Hawaii, you know. Uh, <laughs> it was like I want to be like, yo, this this is pretty. Like, you know, yeah. Uh, so travel travel is one of one of my therapies. And I mean, I went to the roots picnic, you know, I'm in Philly, hung out with some family. Philly? Yes. Did you carry a shot? <laughs> I had a ball, like I had a good time. Like I really just started really just it, but having um having employees and having people to expand business with mm -hmm. I did that and I didn't have to worry about anything you know I knew everything was taken care of they knew you know the operation was needed we picked up airbnbs during that time we picked up funeral homes at that time like we was clean like I mean and I wasn't cleaning you know <laughs> so um and that's when commercial spaces started kind of opening up more um for that and disinfected we did gyms different things of that such um chapels churches you mm -hmm. know so um like i say you have to be careful what you pray for because god will fix the fix to fix you and when yeah. he does he fixes it so perfectly so 
Um, you know, so I just, you know, just kind of, you know, those are opportunities is just knowing who to hire and you're not going to always get it right. And it's okay. Keep hiring. You're always hiring. Um, and just making sure that as a leader, as a CEO of your business, that you set the tone and culture, mm -hmm. you know, um, because if you acting crazy, they're going to be acting crazy too. You're going to, you know, you are what you attract. So, um, and, and people don't understand most time if the business is chaotic, it's you that's chaotic. It's yeah. you're replicating what's going on with you. So people don't want to hear that part though. Um, but I think the internet's cutting up on us again, but uh, I'd really want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for dropping in with us, but I, I really want everybody to know this is the point of going to conferences. This is the point of going to events. Hello, meeting, hello. And, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Internet cut up for a second. I was going to say, okay. this is the point of going to conferences. This is the point of going to events um, is meeting great people who have great information and great knowledge base. Um, I even went to the conference and somebody done gave me a bunch of contracts. So I done cracked up something out here in Austin. You know, So again, you guys have to understand like, just opportunities are there. Are you ready for them? So um, where can they find you on social media? And we're going to close this thing on out. All right. So you can find me on my LinkedIn, um, Bettina Bennett hyphen Walker, because I'm going to keep Bennett. Okay. I'm going to keep my last name like Tina. It's BB. It's BB. You know, BB. I like the BB. Right. <laughs> um, so Bettina uh, Bennett hyphen Walker. Um, you can also follow my cleaning page, um, Miss Ann Treese. Janitorial, I think decluttering services LLC or something. I don't know if I took it off, but you just put Miss Annie's in or Miss Antrice, A N N T R I C E, and you will see that. Um, so you can hit me up on there as well. Um, I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm thinking about it, but I don't know if I'm committed to it. So I don't want to start <laughs> something that I'm not going to be committed to. I'm not even going to sit up here in front with it, but I'm not really on Facebook like that as well um i have to keep my facebook um private uh due to the fact that the nature of what i do um full time um just because people are nosy people will and try to find out what they day and then you know so um yeah you can find me there um just reach out it, whatever i have you guys have i don't gatekeep because somebody didn't gatekeep to get me to the place i am now so i love it i love it well hold on a second we're gonna talk about backstage and i'll go ahead and close it out you guys, this is your girl, Erica, from the Classic Con blog. Thank you so much for being here. We'll split this one into two for sure, but I wanted you guys to really hear from somebody I met from a conference that just had great information, and I love speaking with people who are open, happy, moving forward, and uh, you guys, this has been another segment of Tech Tuesday slash Tech uh, Tactician Thursday, so we'll split it as we can, uh, but you guys, this is your girl, Erica, Classic Con blog. Later.